make sure that we can deliver for Māori, and that's essentially what the King has made clear to us. Uh, the establishment of a Māori health authority, the Māori wards, all those kinds of matters are important kaupapa the King keeps a close eye on, and we meet with him regularly outside of the Koronehana time, which I think is important to the relationship. Look, regardless of which way our whānau vote, the most important thing is they have a platform to speak and also a platform to listen. What is the place of the King Itanga uh, in this modern political landscape. Why is it still important? Look, its relevance today is just as important as it was when it started. And the thing about King Tuhetia in his time, of course, he's, been, he's had to manage some very difficult times across COVID, amongst other things. And I think its relevance today is, one, a place of gathering for our people across the country. Two, uh, a, a, a platform to amplify the matters that are important to us. And of course, three, uh, a place for us to bring, come together to both mourn those who have passed, but also look towards the future. Penny Sutobi Curtis, a man notably missing from the Kaupapa this year, who's always gone to the Kingitanga, uh, to the Koronehana. Um, I understand, Labour, you yourself uh, attended his Tangi and Rotoiti yesterday. Tell us, what is Sutobi Curtis's legacy? Uh, his legacy is one of uh, Māori education advancement, one of uh, huge reach into the issues that are important to our community, but also humility. One of the outstanding traits of Sir Toby I recognised in my time as a Member of Parliament was his ability to bring an issue in front of Members of Parliament and Ministers. And at the end of the meeting, there was a good resolution and of course everyone's manna was intact. And so he will be sorely missed, not just here at the Coronation, but amongst his community and the communities across Aotearoa. Tēnā Penny. Hey, let's move on to Ukraine. You've met the new ambassador for Ukraine. Will you give more lethal aid? Look, we're quite clear that as the requests come into us, which I've been on quite a large number of donor meetings, in fact about five or six, where we've managed to discuss what they need most. And we, as we do that, we look towards what we can supply and how we can be most effective in this, which is why to date we've given uh, not just Putia, but of course our most recent announcement with 120 people and personnel going up to train in the UK. Now, I just want to stress our greatest asset in the NZDF is our people. And so why wouldn't we utilise that great asset? And I know it's welcomed by both Ukraine and our partners. In terms of our equipment, though, Penny, is, is it up to standard? Look, our equipment, of course, we know that uh, uh, we're going through a regeneration period as we look towards the post-COVID world. Uh, and we've got a challenge to make sure that we've got the capabilities uh, that match our aspiration and our strategic goals. Uh, those don't come cheap. So we've got to make sure we have uh, the right processes to make the right decisions so that our Defence Force is uh, resilient but also responsive into the future. And those are the decisions that the Defence Policy Review we announced are going to be making in the coming months. President Zelensky says there are high-level New Zealand soldiers training Ukrainian troops. Are our SA soldiers there, Penny? Look, it's usual government policy. We don't talk about the SAS, but I can tell you uh, in this uh, particular ui uinga that um, the SAS are not uh, in Ukraine and they're not there training our people. Uh, we, uh, if any request for our special services comes in, of course, Cabinet is going to have to consider those requests as they come, but I can confirm for you now, they are not there. Appreciate your time this morning. Penny Henari, tēnā rawātukwe. Tēnā koutou.